Out here with Steward Fishing today, I'm gonna I'm approaching this hole, and I'm gonna show you how I approach, you know, coming up on a hole, especially like this. The water is low and clear, so when I walk up, I'm gonna stay back from this hole. I mean, there's a nice little seam right there, a nice little hole where these fish will sit. I'm not gonna walk up there and start fishing. I'm gonna stay quite a ways back, get my gear set up and rigged up, and then I'll show you from there. So I'm starting off with a little nightmare jig here white head red body and then the little black little black there on the end and so i'm going to start out i know about how deep this hole is it's probably about three feet um so i set my bobber to about two and a half feet and what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of come up behind it and uh, so this is where i want to i want to drift you know cast up here and fish right through here so i'm kind of coming up behind it so the fish can't see me if they're looking forward. And then I'm gonna not get too close to the water. I'm not in the water, back up here on the bank. And I'm gonna take a cast. And see, I'm letting this bobber float and it kind of got pushed in here at the end. And there we go. Do it again. Toss it up there. Now it's kind of in that eddy a little bit up there, but that's all right. It'll work its way around. There we go. There we go. Now a question that you know some people might have is is how long do you sit here and cast? You know, especially with the same with the same jig, you know, how many times am I gonna sit here and cast over and over? And uh, with this clear, you know, this clear water um, and this jig that I know that if it's down there they can see it, I don't really spend a whole lot of time, you know, I make three or four, um, five good casts. Make sure I'm fishing, you know, the, the prime water, um, you know, where I know those fish are going to be sitting. And uh, and then once I fish that through there, and I know if there's a fish in there, he has seen that bait, you know, and I feel confident that if there's one in there, he's seen it. Um, then that's when I go ahead and switch up um, from there, or either move to a different spot or switch up my bait. All right, guys. So now, same deal. As I'm slowly working down the river, I start in close, I stay out of the water, and uh, and so you've got a couple rocks, that one's sticking out, and you've got a couple more that are under the water you probably can't see. So I start in close, start in just, you know, going right up behind that rock. These fish will come up, they'll be moving through here, and pull up behind this rock to rest. But I always, always start in close and stay back from the water. And then as you fish it, you can then start stepping out and, you know, in the water and working across the river. I mean, I've been thrown behind that rock. Now there's another rock right there. That's making a little right there. So now there's kind of a little seam through there I'm fishing. And this river doesn't look like much and it's really shallow, but it holds fish. You know, through here is where, you know, we've actually caught most of our steelhead. And it's real shallow through here. You just pick them up as they're moving, you know, they're just kind of moving up through here. And, you know, early in the morning like this, it's going to be a good time for these fish to be moving. Up to this worm here. 
and uh, I love this color. I got this at the beginning of the steelhead season, and uh, but then pretty much all of our steelhead season rivers were really high and you know off colored, so these darker worms like this, um, I wasn't really fishing them that much. I did a little bit, you know, just to see, but it was more of the brighter worms. Um, but now, yeah, I put that in the water. That thing is awesome. Red head, red tail, black body. A little bit of silver fleck in that in that black body. That looks awesome in this low clear water. So, like I said, I haven't got to fish this color much just because this year we've had a lot of higher water, but... But this worm looks money for this kind of water. So I switched up to a little bobber dogging rig. Same bobber dog rig I had in the last video. I talked about bobber dogging. And uh, my dad's actually drift fishing um, up above me, which is basically bobber dogging, is drift fishing. But uh, yeah, so I have, I always bring, you know, at least two rods with me. Like a snag snagged up there for a second got me excited but uh always bring two rods with me at least usually one with a bobber dog setup one with a regular setup so i can bobber dog you know beads and bait and then i could you know with the regular bobber setup i could fish jigs and worms and also beads or bait if i wanted to um and for you know different situations different water um sometimes one will work better than the other um, every once in a while I'll bring a third rod that has like a spinner, you know, on it or something, or some kind of, you know, a spinner, spoon, something of that caliber. Man, I'm hung up on the same thing. But typically when I'm out here, my dad's with me or, you know, my brother or something will have another rod and they'll be throwing spinners, so. I'm not a huge spinner fisherman. But I, I love the bobber fish, so. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that little video. That's one of my last steelhead trips of the season probably, um, unless I maybe go again. But now it's basically going to be uh, bass fishing is going to be picking up and uh, maybe some spring chinook as well. Um, that might be fun if I can get into some of those. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And 